So here's six ways to build big athletic muscle. Now, to think like where performance meets gains, where traditional lifting usually doesn't include these, you have to include these in your training. So one of the things is starting to implement some more non-traditional compound lifts. And for, as an example, I'm gonna use the Zercher squat. The Zercher squat, you know, what's, uh, again, you are upper back and your core has to work a lot because it's the front load. And by the way, this transfers very well over to life. Think about when you carry a couch, you carry your dog, you're carrying stuff, it's usually front loaded, right? So, and again, it's gonna, it's gonna uh, change up your training if you haven't done these. Having a Zercher bar for this is great, right? Hooking it underneath. I'm gonna rip that bar apart. So whether it is a squat and like really loading that squat up, or using another compound lift, if we're, instead of doing heavy reverse lunges, we're now doing Zercher reverse lunges. That variation can transfer well, again, because you're doing, uh, there's different demands on upper back and the core and it's gonna hit up your, your glutes and your hamstrings because of that front load as well. Now, something else that you can think about in terms of this is things such as Bulgarian split squats with a front squat load or a Zercher load, right? Switching it up, doing your next phase in that and see how you can improve your gains during the transfer over to athleticism as well. Number two is adding rotational components to your lifting. And the thing is there is no sport without rotation. Being able to control, again, your pelvis, your thoracic spine, like you're gonna, it's gonna happen. And, and I would say like slow is smooth, smooth is fast, right? You have to be able to do it slow before you can do it fast and control it. So take any traditional lift and like, how can we add some rotation to it? We're gonna take a Bulgarian split squat and I'm gonna offset load this, go into my position, double grip this handle. And as I'm going down, exhale. So now I'm driving that internal rotation of the hip and upper back rotation. <laughs> Challenging variation. So core is lighting up, obliques are lighting up, glutes lighting up on that. And again, for a lot of lifters, because it's novel, you're gonna get some really great adaptations that, uh, that will be really good for your training and build up the weak links that you might not, not have been working on. From here, let's take a regular landmine press and just change it up a little bit. So if this is our traditional landmine press, we can now do one of two things. I can get elbow underneath my wrist, and from here, I'm gonna dip and add that rotational component. I could also work on explosives here, where we're going, again. Now I'm working on rate of force development, but again, we're adding rotation into our lifts. So adding in some mobility lifts. So let's, let's just talk about mobility in itself is really important and we can train it separately, but it's great to like challenge the mobility and stability and kind of full body range of motion movements. And take for example, a couple different things. One here could be a windmill where with the windmill, I'm gonna press it up, create that 45 degree angle. I'm going to shift into my hip while I'm looking up. So I need thoracic mobility here, hip mobility, core stability as I'm coming back up. There's also, for instance, a bent press. Well, with the bent press, I'm going to shift down as that weight is moving up. And when I'm at the bottom position, I'm now going to come out of it. Now, again, picking and choosing what is your level, because there's many different lifts that we can incorporate for that. But plugging those in into your program can like really get you some nice gains and improve our overall movement and athleticism. Number four would be including some type of power work or plyometrics with your heavy lifts. So let's say that my heavy lift for the day, one of the heavy lifts for the day was a trap bar deadlift. And I pretend that this is heavier. I'm going to pretend that this is like a challenging set of two, three, four reps. And I'm going to do my lift. I'm going to wait two, 15, 20, 30 seconds. And from there, I'm going to do something plyometric and or explosives. I'll do two variations. We could be doing very, very intensive pogo jumps, for example. 
Or it could be contrast, right? We call this contrast sets with a broad jump. So I just did my deadlift, similar movement pattern. So again, taking a heavy lift, if we could, we could also do something like that with a bench press and then a throw, a squat to a box jump. There's a lot of different variations we can do that. But coupling a heavy lift with a plyometric or power movement. Number five would be adding in some type of, I would say multi-directional work, frontal plane, so side to side, even transverse, right? Opening up, I'll show you a couple of variations of this because it just doesn't get included in most training programs. And again, ease into this because it works in neg neglected muscles. Think in that side lunge position, right? On this side, adductors, obviously abductors, all these stabilizers of the hips. And so there's a lot of different, also thinking in terms of tools and positions where we can change you know, one movement, we can add so many different variations to it. So whether it's a goblet squat position into a side lunge. But now I can change that position to a rack position. I can go two dumbbells, two kettlebells. I can also go into that transverse and think of like a opening up Cossack squat. Back to that starting position. Again, if you have not done these movements, adding these movements into your training is smart because we want movement variability and you're also gonna get some nice gains and work on weak links. And number six, sprints. Of course, one of the best things that you can do to build athleticism and honestly build muscle, there's very few movements. Actually, there's no movements that create so much high threshold motor units that are working. And not only that, we can do all types of things. Sprint 10 yard accelerations, which we can do more often. Open it up 15, 20, 30 yards for top speed. But then we can also like create less stress by going on doing uphill sprints, right? Less stress on the hamstrings. We can do that as part of our conditioning and as part of our actual athletic speed development. But adding in, I would ideally say two days per week, but working up to it makes a lot, a lot of sense. And again, it can be part of a comprehensive program in the gym also to build that athletic muscle. So include these six components into your next training program and follow me for more tips like this to look, feel, and perform better.